Hi, and welcome to Ottawa English. I'm Angela. And today we're looking at how to get a high score for an application email in CELPIP Writing Task 1. While it's fairly common to worry about vocabulary as you prepare for the CELPIP test, keep in mind that there are lots of ways you can compensate for any vocabulary issues. And we're going to take a look at those today. CELPIP examiners use this rubric to score each of this, the writing tasks. And clearly, vocabulary really isn't the only thing they're looking at. It's just one of four categories. And even within the vocabulary category, there are several factors that contribute to your score. So obviously, word choice matters. But this one here, a suitable use of words and phrases, means that you're flexible enough to find alternative ways to say something when you can't think of the exact word. This one here, range of words and phrases, means that you don't just use the same words over and over again, and maybe you know a couple of phrases that are related to the topic. And this one, precision and accuracy, means that you use the tools of language efficiency. Let's take a look at a response to this prompt where we're asked to write an email applying for a job as a waitress or, or a waiter if you're a man. This is the response I've prepared. Stop the video for a moment and read it, okay? For word choice, typically we would highlight our strengths. But if you're uncomfortable with that word, you could say bring or draw to your attention. Instead of thrilled, you could say happy or delighted, for extends beyond its food all the way down to its staff. You could just say uh, includes both the food and staff. And if you didn't know the word for catering, you could say food management. And finally, I used broad here, but you could just as easily say wide. And with any of those alternatives, you'd get a high score for vocabulary, because all of these choices are appropriate. I get my score for a range of suitable words and phrases from this attached, restaurant's authenticity, customer focused, be a good fit, and this very eloquent correlative conjunction, both lunch and dinner shifts. And I haven't repeated myself. For precision and accuracy, I pick up a lot of points for these possessives, these participle adjectives, and these parallels. They go a long way to giving me a good precision and accuracy score because they make my language so efficient. Okay, so as you can see, there's lots more to getting your vocabulary score than just knowing specific words and phrases. Now let's take a look at how we can pick up points in the other sections. For content and coherence, I've zeroed in on two ideas, with the first one being about how my language skills would contribute to the atmosphere, and the second about my recognition of my responsibilities in maintaining a good environment. My ideas are good quality because... They're what an employer might be looking for in a cover letter or cover email. I've organized my ideas into two paragraphs. And then introduced each paragraph before expanding on it with plenty of details. For my grammatical range and accuracy score, I formatted my email very carefully with an appropriate salutation, an introduction identifying the purpose of my email, my two ideas, and then a conclusion highlighting my availability. I often see emails that start with a name, but you mustn't do that. You mustn't introduce yourself. In the English-speaking world, readers are expected to look at the salutation to find out who the email's from. And 
everybody in the English-speaking world knows that. It's a recognized convention. So the other thing here that you'll notice is that I've got a line space between each part of my email. And that's important. Don't forget to do it. It goes to your formatting score. For my connections and transitions, I've used plenty of subordinating conjunctions and conjunctive adverbs. In terms of grammar, I've used a combination of simple present, present continuous, and present perfect tenses, along with the second conditional. My sentences, subjects, verbs, and complements are all in the right order. For sentence variety, I've used reference or relative clauses, gerunds and infinitive clauses, and a couple of correlative conjunctions. When we add these subordinating conjunctions that we just spoke about, the conjunctive adverbs and the parallels, it shows the examiner very clearly that I am super, super, super comfortable in using complex sentences to express myself. My spelling and punctuation, of course, is accurate. And now we get to the last section, task fulfillment. My response is relevant and complete because it offers the re reader a couple of good reasons to choose me to fill his vacancy. It's complete because it does everything the prompt asks me to do and the tone is appropriate with all these second conditionals. It's very polite and the length is good because it's about 200 words. Okay, I hope that's given you some ideas about ways you can pick up points for a good score even if you don't have the world's best vocabulary. Start worrying about the right things, guys, <laughs> okay? Thanks for watching and get in touch if you need some help with your writing. Bye-bye now.